So we have two like yeah, great guys on the right and great girls on the left. As I said before, I've ne never ever uh, felt that ugly before between, between two people, but I try, I try to get the best part of it. So the first question and I have, and I want to have it real interactive, so if you have any questions during the 25 short minutes, raise your hands. We have a, like, a discussion cube. I think it's running around, so ask your question. First question for me is, as she said before, like, what are you at the end? Are you an influencer? Are you a VIP? Are you a star? Are you a brand? Um, what is your like first association on what you are really are beside a human being, Pamela? Um, I feel like it's really hard to explain also because I hate the word influencer, just because I feel like it has kind of a negative touch to it, especially in German, because like beeinflussen or beeinflusser is not like something positive. And I also try to not limit myself to a word or to like a word that describes myself because I feel like I can become so many things through what I'm doing at the moment. But I feel like everything started as just a normal girl and now it's kind of developing into a brand because you're creating your own business and stuff. So I feel like I have tons of options and that's why I don't only want to call myself an influencer. Okay, so something between a good girl and a brand? Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> So what is with you, Daniel? What's yeah. your explanation of it? As uh, Pamela already said, I don't like the word influencer as well. Um, I'm not feeling like a star or like a VIP. Um, everything started three years ago with being a normal guy as now and uh, posting photos of doing sports, normal daily outfits, just posting pictures of what you're doing. And I'm quite the same guy as three years ago, so I'm I'm not a VIP and I don't want to be a star or something like this or get special attention more than others. I just want to yeah, deliver or provide inspiration to the people, help people and yeah, have fun for what I'm doing. Yeah. Okay, so y you do not need the people to tell you special things. So if we want to work with you or startups want to work with you, it's just about writing you an email or what is the like best case to get you a bit around and working with these guys? Um, yeah, probably like every, not everything, but like 90% of the time it starts with an email. And of course I receive like a lot of emails, so I kind of need to see what fits to me and what doesn't. So um, yeah, so if I write, like if I give a, a negative response, you don't have to be mad at me just because I need to like structure what I want to do and what I don't want to do. Um, but of course, like if you meet me here and tell me about your idea, that's also great. But in general, emails are the best option. Okay, so so to get you for like developing the product is like sending you an email and not talking to you and saying you are an influencer, more a brand. <laughs> that would, could work, right? Yeah, that could work. Okay, what what is with you, Daniel? Yeah. Should, should I send an email as well? Email is the first the first part, yeah, and then but. I think it's always good to meet the people of the brands and to get to know each other, see that yeah, you fit to the brand and you're funny and you have the right vision and okay. it's always good to meet each other. Okay. So it's sometimes a bit about social interact interaction, not social in an online way, but social in an offline way. So you have contact to your fans offline as well. Is it like hard to learn it or is it easy to handle these guys which you make offline? W what is your... You mean the like followers or yeah. the brands? The followers, yes. I've met like hundreds and thousands of fans um, during the last couple of months because of my um, book signings. Like they were like official in Hamburg, Berlin, my hometown and stuff. So I met quite a few and um, I really liked it. I feel like all of them could possibly be my friends just because we share like the same interests. And of course, like at first it was kind of hard to, to know how to interact with them just because you only got like one minute per <coughs> person and you want to be nice because you know that this person thinks that he knows you although you don't know him. Um, but like from time to time, it's really easy to interact just because like you're always on the same level with them. Okay. And Daniel, you're making a lot of stuff about man products. It's like 
as I've told before, classical man product is fitness, is clothes. What are the classical man things you have to do? And about what are you interacting with these guys following you? Um, I think it's not about what I have to do. It's more like what I want to do because I'm only doing corporations and showing stuff which I'm as interested in. So I'm doing a lot of men fashion. Yeah, I love fashion and I'm doing a lot of fitness, of course, because I'm doing sports for my complete life. But I'm also doing things like uh, cars because I love cars and everything which I'm into, I show the people and yeah, that's the point. Okay. So you, you, I think you both connected to each other, have like, or added to each other, other have nearly like 4.1, you have 1.2 million, you three million. What do you think is like the secret to grow a community like this? I mean, three million, there are like many brands or products which really love to have three million clients at the end. So what, is, is there like a special tip or a special secret to raise these number? Um, I always feel like maybe my secret was to not plan it, just because that's like the most, I hate the word authentic, the, um, yeah, maybe the most authentic way to do it, just because you didn't have the intention of getting like popular or something, you just did what you love and that's why you became popular for that. Um, but of course, like there are certain rules like posting regularly, always focusing on quality and not on quantity and like interacting with the followers. So this is like the base of everything. But I always told myself that I don't want to plan everything just because social media is something you cannot completely explain. And that's why I feel like you shouldn't try to plan everything. Okay. What is with you, Daniel? Do you yeah. have a secret? Many people are asking about the secret or the special key to get the same followers than we have. But I think there is no key and I always tell the people there is no key, for sure there is no key. But um, I started three years ago, I think Pamela as well. I think it no, I think five years ago. Five years I, think ago. I started okay. so early. Yeah, so early. <laughs> I think Pamela was there 15. 15. Yeah, <laughs> I was 15. Okay, just but like I think it was much feel worse again. It was much easier at that time because there was not so many people trying to reach followers as today because today everybody wants to be a blogger, or wants to be influencer and today the market is full yeah, and um, we started very early, always stay true to ourselves like we both started with mirror selfies with no special quality or something like that but we, we stayed who we, who we are and who we were so it's very important to be yourself all the time, no matter how many followers you have. And but still, although the like the influencer business is really saturated, I don't think that it's impossible to become popular nowadays. Just like you, you don't, um, you shouldn't like copy somebody else. Like, don't look at my profile and tell yourself, okay, I'm gonna do it like the exact same way because like there is already a Pamela out there. Um, I know a couple of girls who got popular during the last year. They started from zero and now they are at 800k, k, so 800,000. And they did something with dancing or something. So if you find a topic that isn't like so popular at the moment, you can still get popular in that. So, so to get back a bit to platforms, like social media platforms, you both start with Instagram, as I saw it, and what's up with Snapchat musically? What, how important is it for you and maybe also for the brands to have a look at these platforms as well, Daniel? Um, I'm using Snapchat very less at the moment because I don't want to handle both applications like Instagram Stories and Snapchat, and now Instagram updated the face filters I'm not using face filters, but for the <laughs> girls, it's very important. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever posted and a picture without a filter? Yeah. No, he's sure. talking about like the, the puppy the filter. Oh, okay, okay, the, okay. The dog here and, uh, yeah. and the fun um, filter. The fun filter, yeah. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm really not using Snapchat because I don't know, it's, I think it's dying. And so, uh, Snapchat, you say already Snapchat is dying. <sighs> for me. Holy shit, hopefully. Do you see it the same way? <laughs> It's like Snapchat, just girls and filtered and dying. I don't know. I still love Snapchat, to be honest. Yeah. Like, 
to be really honest, I always do like a story on Snapchat and then <laughs> in the end of the day, I um, save it from Snapchat and upload the exact same thing on Insta stories just to like put everything out there on both medias. But I don't know, I still love Snapchat, I don't know why. It's pretty interesting and I saw it on the, uh, on the reaction as well because like they have a totally view out of their community and a guy who have an Instagram um, profile with 1.2 million viewers which are mainly men and mm -hmm. women, mainly men, it's like really he says like Snapchat is going down. It's pretty interesting because firstly it's the view out of the community, it's not the view on the product, it's the view what the people like to do and that's what always brands and startups probably make and is, as a mistake, they always focus on their product but it's on focusing on target group and understanding what they, they are about. Okay, so Snapchat is dead, Instagram is growing, posting, what is up with Facebook? Is there Facebook anymore in your world? In Actually, in no. World. No, in both of you not? Okay. Because the people are getting too old in Facebook, for your opinion? I don't know, I never focused in, on Facebook in my life, so I, I, don't, I don't even know how many followers I have on Facebook. Yeah. Like, maybe once a month I share the same picture that I shared on Instagram and Facebook, but only if it comes to my mind, so it's like really not a focus of mine. It's the same in your world, right? Um, in my opinion, Facebook, you have to pay Facebook for uh, reaching as much people as you can. There's everything about paying to Facebook to reach people, and that's the best fact on Instagram, that you don't have to pay for Instagram for reaching people. Hopefully, they will never change it. Hopefully, because then it's getting worse and worse. Okay. If you have to pay for reaching people, it's not natural. It's Is there right now any questions regarding the themes of how, how dead the social medias are, for example? Is there any? Nobody has to ask something. Here's no startup which is raising a product and wants to know what happens in the community. <laughs> Come up. Okay, but, but I have a few more questions. So, influencer marketing, as we said before, you really not like to get named as an influencer first. Secondly, it's, it's kind of a buzzword. Maybe it's marketing with people or opinion leaders or however you call it. Have you made like pretty bad, or like have you seen pretty bad things, bad brands which comes to you and so like you have to do it because I'm the best, no discussion, bad prices, so what are the worst stories you have? have had in, during your, like, Instagram time? I think... Um, of course, like, there are some brands that approach me that don't fit to me at all. Like, a lot of cigarette and e-cigarette companies contact me and it's like, I don't smoke and, like, I focus on fitness so I don't see any connection to that. Um, yeah, so, like, but it's not a big deal. You can just tell them no and that's it. I mean, what should they do? And, but still, I always feel like there are a lot of people in the business who just see the young 20-year-old girl and feel like they can, I don't know, they can do things that are not honest with me. Um, but I understand my business and I understand what I do, so I f think that I always notice it, but still, I feel like the business in general is not that honest. Okay. What is your opinion on it? Um, yeah, I separate a lot of inquiries which I want to do or which I don't want to do. There are more than 80% which I send, sorry guys, it's not my product, it's not, it's not fitting to me. And um, there are not so many bad experiences. Bad experiences may be bad if the customer has too, uh, too strict briefing, like yeah. we want the picture like that, 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 and that. They come to me for, for bringing my style or my way of the product to the customer, to the brand. And then they gave me such a strict briefing, like do it like that, like that, like that. And that's not how it works the best. And normally you have to provide the influencer more free space to create your own content. And because the, the quality is there and the people love what we do, so it has to be good. Yeah, so yeah that's true. Like, um, I just worked with a watch company. Of course, I won't tell you which one. No, I want to work with one, and they are just too strict. Like, of course, they pay, and I like the watches and stuff, but um, 
they just keep um, making me reshoot the picture just because yeah. they wanted the watch to be a little closer and a little more visible. And I always tell them, I know my community and I know what they will like. And if you want to book like, I don't know how it's called, Werbebanner, like an advertising thing, um, then you can just book it. But I'm not that kind of profile, so I will do it the way I like to. And yeah, so at least although they are paying me and although the product is nice, I will not continue working with them just because it's like, a pain. It's a good point. Like the next bigger theme right now in influencer marketing is this theme of automization. I have a pretty special opinion on automization, but it's going in this direction. Do you think automization in influencer marketing works with you or with other brands and influencers and people? What do you mean with automation? Yeah, like that, that, that you're getting on the platform, they're collecting every influencer, okay. and if they have a campaign, campaign and putting it upside down, then you like push their products. Mm, I don't think that that's the best version to do it just because like the influencer marketing is so personal like each profile is different and you have to understand that you are working with people and not only with a profile and so you have to talk to them and like you have I mean you you should um, you should change your briefing according to each profile just to make it fit the best way so I don't think optimization is a good thing. You, yeah, I think uh, quite the same. I think every corporation is in individual and you have to look for the person if it fits to the brand and you cannot just go to a platform like I want that kind of followers, that amount of comments and uh, that's, my, that's my influencer. I think it's much more and in the last time um, it's, it's uh, really, really important for the brands to yeah, to recognize or to understand that it's important to have a story behind every every advertising. And it's not about just showing the watch and say, hey, that's a nice watch. No, it's much more. And it's all, all corporations with stories have always the best benefit. And it's stories it's are so it important. It sounds like it's getting bigger and bigger and you get a lot of requests. Um, is it natural that they, I saw, I saw the question. <laughs> I'm happy that you are the first guy who raised his hand. Um, but just one question from me again. Is it like, do you have agents or agencies or guys who are representing you? Because, I mean, how many mails you get a day and how, how you handle this stuff? Mm, I think you can do it both ways. I used to have an agency. Then, because of several reasons, I, I don't work with my agency anymore. Um, just because, like, as I said, the influencer business is something really personal. You have to get along with the people. You have to have the feeling that they represent you in a way you want to be represented and not in a way that they think it's best. So I changed my business thing into working with people that are really close to me and that I trust and that completely understand what I want. So I'm only working with, like, a couple of people at the moment and not with the whole agency anymore. Okay. So it's just you're working with the agency, right? I'm working with the agency, but... You're, you're not doing? I, I am. I'm working with the okay. agency. But, um, yeah, for me, the point uh, that Pamela said is very, very important to have people representing you, uh, like who you are. And, uh, yeah, but there are so many emails a day and it's so much time to for the organization I can't, can't handle by myself. So I'm, yeah, I have to have somebody for all the organization stuff and emails and to okay. focus on the... A at the end, it sounds a bit emotionally in your decision, so probably not easy to handle, you guys. There, there was a question, probably just scream it in. If the cube is not arriving you, uh, it is coming. Mega, danke. There we go. Uh, hi, Pamela. Hi, Sven. And hi, Daniel, from one uh, Solinger dude to another. Um, do you have any experiences in influencer marketing for recruiting, um, like for employer branding or special campaigns? And if so, or if you have an opinion, what kind of tips can you give a company which want to use influencer marketing for um, like Ausbildungsmarketing, like targeting young, uh, young people or young talents? Um, yeah, thanks for the question. Good question. Um, in my opinion, 
if there's a brand who wants to yeah, set an influencer campaign, it's very important to have know-how on this topic. And if you don't have know-how on this topic, how to um, yeah, choose the right influencer, it's so important to get know-how from an agency or from people who are very into that business because it's really a very, very tough business to, there are so many brands who decided to take the wrong influencer and then there was no benefit, there was quite nothing and then they said, okay, we will never do again. It's, it's very, very difficult and uh, I think the decision who is the right person for us and who is the right community, who fits to the brand and everything has to be really good to have a benefit. If it's not, you will have no benefit. So it's the, the biggest point is to choose the right one and if you don't have the know-how to, yeah, I think it's right additionally, it's additionally um, another step is like to really get this view into your target group and describe them because there are so many brands coming, f for example, to us as an agency, so it's like, okay, we have these KPIs, blah, blah, we want to reach this, but um, they are not pretty sure and not pretty done with the work in their target group. So building persona and really looking, is this the 13 year old girl, 30 year old girl, and like really getting this tight and after that really finding the right people. You, you, you can find them automatically for sure. There are tools to find them, but we discussed all of these stuff before and as you hear them right now, you have to get into contact with them. You have to talk with them to really get a better feeling on if they are like the right one to your brand. But there are campaigns also online. Probably you can have a look at the Deutsche Bahn campaign, which really is a hard job to explain why you want to work at Deutsche Bahn. Um, and by side, we developed this campaign on DB, DB Sport Camps, but have a look at it. There was like a pretty close persona, uh, so pretty close target group, pretty clear influencer you can find then and then develop in these cases. So there are possibilities to play it. Uh, may I have a follow-up? Yeah, if nobody other is trying. Uh, uh, one, one and then here. Okay, great. Because I think this is a very valid point, how to, and I think this is important and interesting for like everyone here, it doesn't matter if you are a startup which want to sell a product, or like you're like me, you're working in the employer branding um, industry with clients. How to figure out how to choose the right influencer if you can't afford? Like if you are a small company, an agency, or startup, how to figure out who's the right influencer? Like, do I have to see uh, uh, every post of you, Pamela? Um, do I have to watch every Snapchat story? what I have to do. You, you already gave a hint with checking the, the persona. Uh, maybe you can give us some more details. Would be very appreciated. Um, I feel like, I mean, social media is something really open. You can, like, everybody can watch every profile. So if you just, like, invest some time and look at the, I don't know where you even are. Did you sit down? There he is, oh. standing. Um, okay, there. Um, if you just, like, invest some time and check through the most, maybe, I don't know what you're looking for, maybe the most famous profiles on Instagram in Germany, if you're looking at the German market, then you should also consider um, looking at the engagement rate because buying followers is a big thing at the moment, which I'm not a fan of and some people do it and you can see like if the, po if the person has a lot of followers but less than 4% engagement regarding the likes and the comments, then that's not a good hint. And that might um, might be the case. I mean, like, in the end, your project might not work out just because the profile wasn't, like, honest all the way. And um, I don't know. It's a lot about, like, the feeling. Talk to the influencers personally, not only over an agency, and see if they have some interesting ideas that you can incorporate in your project. So I feel like there's nothing you, there's not like a strategy that you have to do to have a successful project. Just like see what works and try to figure it out. Probably additional trick, pretty cheap trick or like tip is just have a look at your target group and then have a look at the medias who are talking with these target groups and then have a look into these medias about which people, which stars, which not stars, about which people these medias are talking. And if you like, can define these guys, then you can make pretty sure, clear, that you raise these people into communication and you raise these people into target group. It's like a cheap trick, but it's sometimes working, so probably that helps, all right? 
Hi, um, my question is totally different. Um, but what is your opinion of the influencer community in Germany? Are you like old friends or is it like really competitive? And also how does that compare internationally? Do you have any like, experience? Yeah, um, <laughs> there are, good question. Um, there are a lot of influencers in Germany. It's a big community and um, we know each other the most, I think. Um, but there are o always people you are very good with, like Pamela is really nice, and there are some <laughs> others which are really nice. <laughs> and um, But also internationally, you know a lot of people, but there are always some people who you met for the first time, and you yeah. think, oh, that's not my person. And, um, but it's a big community, and mostly you, you meet at events all over the world, and then you, yeah. Get in contact. Many influencers are, yeah, um, pushing themselves with posting pictures together, like, "Hey, I love her so much, and she's so cool, my best friend." And but it's not like that. Just for a big benefit of getting busy, and I don't like that so much. These guys are always making these calm answers, which is t t totally right. From an agency view, there's additional, I mean, at the end, they are all competitors in their ver verticals. You have to understand it. So like if you're going to a dinner on fashion week and making the example down to business, there are sitting like 100 agencies and everybody wants to raise these budgets. So for, I think they are all fine together, but they are competitors when they're working in their same verticals, you know? Yeah, kind of, but still like, from my experience, I am like with most of them, I'm like totally fine and I like them, but I'm not best friends with them. What I really don't like, but which is the case, is that at events, everybody's like pretending to be best friends, but afterwards they never contact yeah. you again. So I really hate that this pretending to be closer than you really are because this is not what you call friendship. And they always, not they always, but some of them stage those friendships on social media just to make it look interesting. Um, and I, like a couple of times, I made the mistake that I, like, I don't have something bad in mind and I don't, I also don't feel like that there is a lot of competition. I don't really feel it. So I always give like my contacts to everybody. I'm like, oh, I'm working with Puma. Do you want to work with Puma too? I'm giving you like the, their phone number or something. And then in the end, those people never give back anything. And that's like kind of the point where I decided maybe I have to focus on my own business and not like always giving everybody everything. Um, so others are pretty competitive and I have to learn that too, but you don't really feel it every day. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure if, if the guys raises the light, do we have to finish or is it just to get it a bit warmer? <laughs> so not that I'm running, not, not that I'm running yeah. out of time. Uh, okay, so okay. If, if nobody is screaming, three minutes, all right, now, then we have one, two more questions. Here we go, one, two, and then. Yeah, the cube is coming. They, she likes to throw it. Yeah. Was echt gut warm mit der Lampe, ne? Die wollte das Ding einfach schmeißen. I um, I just wanted to ask you. I have a food startup with Hazelnut, and I really would like to work with you, one of you. But the thing is, you have the image that you are not reachable. Because if I um, follow you, I mean, especially Pamela, I see you have a book, you are working with big brands. So for me, it means I have really no budget to pay you. Is it wrong what I think or is it right? Soll ich antworten? Oder du lieber? Ich kann auch <laughs> no, like <laughs> not reachable is definitely the wrong term because everybody can reach me through email. Um, I read all my emails, but um, <laughs> most of the times my, I don't know how to call it, it's not my manager, not my agent, but the person I'm working with answers for me. Um, so I know everything. And, but the thing is like for, especially me, I'm pretty like my food, my food section on my Instagram, like I have, three food companies that I'm working with, so I'm not like really looking for another one. And I get along with them really well, and some of them 
pay a little more and some of them have a little less budget, so you can always talk, but like asking somebody to post something regularly, like over a year or something and not paying anything is probably, to be honest, um, yeah, not, not easy. possible. Not easy. <laughs> <laughs> Just because like um, we are creating a big value and of course we kind of want a compensation for that, but still you can always talk like I don't ask for the same price every time and sometimes the first posts are not as expensive just to show the company that the postings work and that they will see an effect, but in the end doing something without money is only for charity most of the time. So like for charity we are not get, I'm, I mean I don't get paid for charity. I don't know. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, but charity is most of the times without money. Other than that, I mean, you are asking me to post something to increase Jeff? the money that you take. So I don't know. It has to be a balance. What about shares? Or shares is also possible, yeah. Uh, and I think there are, have been some description in it as well. So, like, if you're having this contact with love, if you're like still creative, if you're giving them the chance to be creative, then the chances are like rising to work yeah. with them. But if you're sending an email or your intern is sending an email, then like there's no bigger chance to get this done. La maybe last uh, question, right? Quick question um, for, for both of you. Um, what do you think will happen in the future uh, regarding influencer, social media, Instagram, and e-commerce? For example, I think it happened in um, America, Insta shopping. So what do you think will happen in the future, next couple of years, regarding this topic? Yeah, I think it will um, grow. Uh, as you can see, America is always in front of us. They are much more much bigger than we are now with Instagram campaigns and they are very more, for example, in the um, visibility of the advertising, like you have to mark your post like ad. It's in Germany, it's not like that at the moment and it's getting into it. And I think um, the tool Instagram itself will also get updates. Hopefully not as I said, like that you have to pay for reaching people more like maybe shopping inside that you can directly link articles yeah. like what that. What is Instagram shopping? Like you said, they developed something called Instagram shopping. Too, honestly, uh, I think it's happened la uh, for, past for a couple of min uh, months. Instagram was starting Insta shopping in America. They like to start it where you can see the product and can buy it yeah, straight away. You don't have to go with another, with another link to another shop so you can yeah. buy the product at Instagram. Yeah. Like a streamless shopping experience. Yeah, I feel like that would be a great thing to do just because like um, every additional step yeah, kind exactly. of reduces the customers. Like yeah. the easier it is, the more sales you make. But still, I would be afraid of losing like the Instagram feeling. Like it shouldn't like look like an advertising platform, yeah. although like sponsored posts are marked with sponsored and everything. So that's the truth. But still, like, if you can shop everything I'm wearing, I don't know if it kind of loses the personal touch. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, okay, so I get, like, these totally, they're making signs like this <laughs> and this and this. So there's no question. Thanks for having us at the end. Thank um, you very much. Selfie time with me for sure you can have, maybe with the others as well. <laughs> yeah, so enjoy the Eureka. Thanks to the whole team, and, yeah, happy place. Bye. Thank you.